For our third lesson, I've returned again as though we were logging into our course for the first time. And what, I'm, uh, what we have here is what we should be used to. We're in the Build tab. And from here, we're going to move to the Assessments tool. Again, we're doing this so that we can get that repetition in there and really get used to looking for the tools uh, where they're located. So now we have uh, Quiz 1, and we have some additional information that we didn't have last, last time. We have the type, and it's a quiz. If this was a, a survey, it would say survey. Um, we have the duration, and this is the duration that we have allowed for our students to take this test. And we have the total number of points, and I'll show you how to edit each of these items. Uh, you can see here that it is a hidden item. And I had said that once you create your test and you add at least a single question, you're going to want to come back and set that. Last time we discussed the action link for this item. So we're going to go ahead and click that. We're going to move down and we're going to edit the properties. And this is going to allow us to do some different stuff. Some of this should look very familiar. Quiz 1, your first quiz was a description. The item is hidden or we can now show the item. We have at least one question in our quiz. The grade book entry again define this as you need it to be. Um, now we're gonna get into some delivery options. Um, what this means is that you can deliver all questions at once, you can allow you know one at a time and they can go back to them, or you can deliver them uh, one at a time and you cannot return to a question that you have uh, you have viewed. Display assessment in the same browser or in a new browser window. Now this is up to you as the instructor, um, but aware, be aware that some students may have pop-up blockers on and to notify them possibly right here in your description, you know, um, I use pop-ups for this quiz, da 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 da, um, and you, you can let them know that they should turn off their pop-up blocker. Um, here is the duration. We saw previously that it said they have one hour. We can make this unlimited. We can, we can set a predetermined time. We can say 30 hours. We can say 30 minutes, 30 days. Um, now this next option right here becomes very important. Let's go ahead and reset this to one hour because I, I don't know that I've ever had an instructor that gave me um, 30 hours to complete a quiz. Um, disallow answer submissions if the time has expired. Now what this means is uh, a student has one hour to complete it. They've gone through most of the questions, uh, but they don't complete the assessment until an hour and 15 minutes. If this is selected, nothing happens. Uh, none of the answers are recorded that occurred after the one hour time period. Um, if this is not selected, it will allow them to go ahead and submit the answers, uh, but it will annotate that these ones were after the time period, and that then becomes up to you as the instructor to determine how you uh, want to handle those. And that's that's a good item to put into uh, your notes uh, that we discussed last time. Attempts you can allow uh, up. Uh, you can select up to five attempts or allow unlimited attempts. What this means is the student takes the the, uh, the assessment. If uh, they want to retake it, they can do it up to this amount of times. Now, randomizing questions in a question set for each attempt. This, you know, fairly straightforward. It's going to randomize them in a question set, uh, and we'll have to discuss that in another training. Uh, the minimum attempt time is where you could say maybe one day. So if they took it Monday, they could not take it again until Tuesday. And student score, this is always one of those subjects that, that people become very interested in. Uh, you can release the score immediately after they've been sub, uh, they've submitted their, their answers. It can be um, released once it has been graded. They, uh, and this is very important if you're having you know paragraph answer questions and stuff like that because there's no way for the system to automatically grade those and it will need the instructor intervention to go in there and go ahead and grade those. Um, you can have the the scores not released until the availability period is is 
done. What this means is that uh, when you have your students going in there and you have students taking it at different times and you show them the answers uh, possibly uh, for each question so they can know where they went right and where they went wrong, you would certainly not want that to be released uh, for security purposes before all students had taken that. Um, you can also simply not release at all. Uh, now if multiple t attempts were allowed, this is where you can determine which attempt will move it into the gradebook. Um, you can release statistics. Again, this is where you can associate goals. Uh, availability dates. This is where you determine when a student can access this specific assessment and when this assessment um, concludes. You can enter this into uh, the calendar. That makes it very easy for students to um, keep track of their assignments. Um, here are the result property options. Uh, here you can show the feedback, you can show uh, the student score for each question, and this is where you get into the debate of do you want the students having the answers or not, and this is where you're going to set those options. Um, here are the submission properties. So when a student submits an email or submits the assessment you can have an email sent to them saying you know your assessment has been submitted um, we'll take a look at the security uh, security properties these are used for proctored exams you can set a distinct uh, IP address if there's uh, a pro uh, proctoring location that you would like to use such as a student uh, assessment center um, you can give them a proctor password which means a student cannot access this specific quiz even though it's online unless they're in uh, the location you want them to be with someone that you want to be pro uh, proctoring the exam and this is where you would set those items. Custom instructions uh, as it says custom instructions will appear at the top of the assessment and be visible to all users so this is where you might want to put in um, that there's going to be you know pop-ups used or that you may be using some different type of applications or you know hey this is an open note uh, test go ahead and make sure you have this or that um, so this is where you can you can put this in this concludes our training thank you very much